Thank you for visiting my channel. My name is Oscar Mendez. I am a professional football soccer coach and physical trainer. Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, the first part of um, several um, tools that we have in methodology in, in, in contemporary modern football. And I several, I'm going to put several examples. Okay, so in this case we're going to talk about the rondos, which is a very uh, much used or utilized right nowadays in <clears throat> all over the world. Okay, so the rondos were uh, made famous by a, um, a famous football soccer coach whose name is uh, Laureano Ruiz, okay, uh, when he started working in the 60s and 70s in, in Football Club Barcelona. And later when other coaches arrived to, to this team, to this famous club, like uh, Juan Vila and physical trainer uh, Seirulo, Francisco Seirulo, and of course, uh, Johan Cruyff of the Dream Team, they added more tools, more methodological tools that were um, um, very much used by this club and were made famous, especially uh, the, recently by Pep Guardiola when, when he was in front of Football Club Barcelona. Okay? So the, the definition of rondos are exercises where players will place themselves in a certain manner. It could be inside or outside of space where they try to keep possession of the ball, where one or several opponents tries to steal the ball from them or provoke them to make a mistake and in case of change of possession, they will change to the team in possession, okay? So they will, uh, there will be a, a change of the, to the other team, okay? The, the, class, the, the, the different types of, of rondos, there are many, okay? I just put some here. Uh, these are the most commonly used, okay? The basic one, which is the most simple one, the positional one, which is related to the position where the, the player is going to play in the system that the, your team is going to use. Transition is very commonly used in the rondos because it, it always, whenever, if it's not analytical, the, the, the rondo, there will always be transition because you always change from attack to the defense or defense from attack. Intensive, which is related to the, 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 um, the physical aspect that you're going to work on. Okay, the mobility, the mobile, uh, will be the rondo that's, that's where you're going to progress where, when your team is going to, to, um, to, to attack, okay? And, um, and the last one is if it's double or triple, okay? So basically, um, these are the most commonly used. And we can give some practical examples, okay, on... Uh, Okay, so the first one, which is the basic one, which we see on top here, it's a very simple 4B1. I'm sure many of you have done it or used it. And it's uh, very simple. Normally, the, the more simple the, the rondos are, we use them basically on, on the days of, of, of tension of the muscle contraction. Or we can use them also as a complementary exercise uh, for a warm-up, for example, also, which are very commonly used in Spain, okay? These are very simple where, um, in this case, a player that, that gains the ball goes outside and the player that loses it goes inside, okay? And the second one is very similar also, but by now it's a 4B2 with three colors, okay? As you see here, now you're going to see, and the team that loses the ball goes in and the, the one that gains the ball, if they're able to retain it and give take it out of pressure, they will go outside, okay? And in the... And you can notice that in the second and the third one, we can already start working third man because as you see, the player that has the ball has um, a player next to him and a player in the back. So we, we already start using the, the third man and the second man, okay, pass. So in, unconsciously, we're training already the players uh, for this that we'll, maybe we'll ask them in the, in the, in the matches and in the, in the other exercises, okay? And the last one will be... a. Uh, uh, where you can see the third one more easily, okay, because we have a, a joker that's playing in the middle, okay, and uh, it's uh, the same as before but with a joker, okay. Now we're going to go into examples of positional rondos, okay. The positional rondos are basically uh, what you have to take into account is how you what your system is your team going to play. So, normally, the first one in this case, we're emulating a, a a four two three one from left to right okay and uh, or it could be for example uh, 
going f uh, backwards. Well, basically, the, the, in this case, it's very simple. Okay, four, two, three, one, from left to right. We're going to have uh, Joker in the middle, which would be the, the the offensive midfielder behind the forward in this case, in a four, two, three, one. And the three midfielders in the middle are going to try to steal the ball. Now, once they steal the ball, the, the positional rondo, the difference with the normal rondo is that now the players are supposed to maintain a position they have. So they will move inside that space, but they will never lose reference of that space, okay? So they will always keep that space. So in this case, <clears throat> the three players in the middle, if they steal the ball, they would change uh, position to the players that have, are in the, uh, the color that they steal from. And uh, they will always maintain organization or order as far as the structure. In this case, in the one on the right, you can see the back four. The blue are, would be the four players in the back four. Then you see the, the two players that will be the two uh, wings or two offensive midfield, uh, two midfielders on the sides. Okay, and then we have we can be have uh, either a forward or, or an offensive midfielder. Okay, so in this case it's the same thing. You can do the pressure with two players. You can do it with three, whatever you you prefer. Uh, you know, according to the difficulty you want to apply, you can go progressively, which is normally what I do. Okay, and this is the same thing. Okay, we're going to try to look for. A shape where, uh, what the, according to the system that our team is going to lose to use, I'm sorry, and the players have to move inside that that system, okay. And of course, remember that when we're doing these type of exercises, we're giving them information according to what our game model is is like, right? So we're giving them information, okay, of what we're going to do in a match, you know, and of course, what I always, uh, what I talked about before, the the, the different types of uh, superiorities, okay, especially the socio-affective uh, superiority, where I know how my teammate is, is, is characteristics, you know, her characteristics, if he or she is fast, uh, technically he's very good or, or bad, or if he's left-footed, right-footed, if he, you know, all this information that from uh, training and, and playing with, with the same people, you, you begin to, to learn, okay, from your teammates, okay? So these, these are two examples of Positional rondos, okay. The difference normally with positional, I'm going to talk about this maybe in the next video or on the, on the, on the following one, with possession or positional exercises is the amount of players. So the, the rondos normally are not, because I see this confusion a lot, in, especially in, in, in British, uh, because they're not uh, used to, you know, or, or they don't really know what, how, what is a rondo. Uh, then rondo, with the, compared to the to the um, to the possession or positional exercises are that the difference is the main difference is that the amount of players you, you normally in the spaces the players are not going to be so many okay okay so in this case uh, the first exercise we're going to talk about transition okay so these uh, transition are basically the word itself it says it all you know it's um, where we're going to change from defense to attack or attack to defense okay the first one we're going to talk about and also reorganization when we attack okay so the first one on top, it's a 4v2, as you see. After a certain amount of passes, they have to change to the green team, and the green team will try to maintain or keep possession also on the other space, okay? The two players that were waiting will go and press and try to steal the ball, and the other two blue players will go to the two spaces, okay? Uh, I'm gonna leave it on so you can see example. Okay, so if whatever of reason, um, the blue team steals the ball, they have to get the ball out of pressure and change space, okay? And there they re reorganize again, and again we make another 4v2, but with the blue team in this case, okay? Holding possession. Okay, the second example is <coughs> a, a rondo, which is very commonly used, uh, it's used a lot also. Okay, so we're gonna change here and at the same time, we're going to work, you know, some concepts or, or principles of our team. You know, for example, you know, to open up when they have the ball and to, to close when they lose it. Okay, so in this case, the blue team is going to maintain position 5 before with a joker in the middle, a red joker. And if they lose the ball, immediately they have to close and try to gain it back as quick, quick, quick as possible. And the other team that gained the ball, the opposite. You now they have to try to not lose the ball, play with the joker and open up. And receive outside the space of course you cannot steal the ball outside the space okay and the last one on the bottom is a um, okay the last one on the bottom 
is um, okay a 3v2 in the small space if the team that's defending okay gains the ball they have to change after a certain amount of passes we can change and maintain possession okay and reorganize again okay so always uh, working this you know the the change from attack to defense defense to attack and the reorganization from one space to the other okay as I mentioned before we're always talking about organization disorganization in modern football okay uh, okay this is more um, intensive okay so we're gonna focus more on on the rondos when we're uh, trying to get a lot of high intensity when we're trying to get a lot of stops and goes and changes of direction okay so in this case, um, it's a 4v2 on the first exercise constant, constantly. And um, after a certain amount of time, it can be 15, it can be 10, 15, 20 seconds. They have to go out again. Okay, the ball is always um, in possession of one team. And again, we change and the, the two players in the, on the top would go in again and try to get the try to steal the ball, okay? So this is basically a more focusing more on... Uh, intensity stop and change and stop and go and change of direction okay so this is another example of an intensive okay now of course remember that when you ha add more complexity to the exercise the, the intensity is going to go down down so normally the the intensive the the intensive uh, rondos are more uh, very simple okay in this case, it will be a 6v3 with three teams, okay? The three reds are in the middle, and they try to gain the ball. If they gain the ball, they have to try to score the goals. So this will be transition to counterattack, okay? And the two teams that have the ball try to have to try, if they lose the ball, to defend the four goals, okay? And the last one in the bottom is will be a 3v1. After a certain amount of passes, they can change, okay? And if, if the, group, the team inside steals the ball, Get the ball to pressure diagonally and change reorganize again quickly to either pressure and defend or to have possession of the ball okay not lose it okay okay we have the mobile uh, rondos okay the mobile rondos are rondos where we're gonna uh, move from one space to the other it can be two spaces it can be three or four i put one of each okay and these are very uh, what i what i use there are hundreds and thousands of rondos okay and these are the ones i just chose these by by you know, but uh, I didn't, um, you know, you can, you can, there are many different types, okay, and you can play around with this, especially if you're always trying to teach whatever you want to teach, remember, no? Okay, so this is a, a 5v2, okay, and after a certain amount of passes, they have to uh, change the space, but maintain the organization, okay, so, okay. Are always maintaining the organization after four or five passes if whatever you want okay the coach okay in the other one we're gonna have <coughs> uh, three teams three colors okay and um, of course the green in this case are the ones defending so we're gonna have a 5v2 in the left square that you see if after a certain amount of passes these two teams the blues and the reds are gonna try to change to the to the first square or the square on the right i'm sorry okay and reorganize very quickly and of course if green steal the ball they play with the green player and they have they go they change okay so the team that loses the ball has to press again so and in this case similar okay possession after a certain amount of passes we reorganize offensively to another space okay if we lose the ball the team has to get the ball out of pressure and they have to reorganize offensively okay which is the green team same same idea okay okay so we go to the doubles and triples okay so i put some example here the doubles and triples as you see the the one that i placed here is very similar to the one before it's always a 4v2, okay? The only th thing is that the one in the, the players in the in the left and in the middle are the are going to be the ones who are going to move. So we're always trying to make, have mobility, okay? There's a famous uh, sub-principle in, in, in Spanish football, which is called, in Barcelona especially, which is called viajar juntos, which means to, to travel together. So this is when you progress, when your team progresses with the ball. So the idea is that the players don't run you know, like crazy towards the goal but they run together you know this is what they call it 
travel together. Okay, so in this case, after a certain amount of passes, they reorganize very quickly, okay, and occupy the space. Okay, in the next one, then on the bottom here, it's a 4B2, the same principle as before. We're going to have two spaces again. After a certain amount of passes, four or five passes, they change to the other side. And the pressure now is going to come from the from the outside, okay? So we're going to try to make them aware of not losing the ball when there's applied pressure, okay? If they steal the ball, they have to pass outside, and the play is reorganizing in the next square, okay? So as you see, you have many variations, okay? This is another variation in three spaces. So it's a 4B4 inside the middle, and four players, two and two on each side, okay? The red ones. So after a certain amount of passes, I mean, they have to try to maintain possession and play with the two jokers on each side that are the red ones. So if the team loses the ball it, to the team inside, they just change from attack to defense. Now, if they, the players outside lose the ball, they have to go inside the pressure, and the team that gains it, uh, they, they occupy the same uh, position that the red team is in. Okay, very simple also. Okay, in this case they lost it inside, so in this case a blue defend. Okay, if the red lose it, the blue team now go out and the red team has to try to recuperate the ball. Okay, and here also in the last one it's similar. Okay, but now the red team are inside defending. Okay, so here we have a three versus one, and here we have a two versus one in the middle. Okay, on the left square we have a three v one. On the middle square, we have a 2v1, and on the last square, we have a 1v1. So, the same idea. After a certain amount of passes, they will progress to the next square, okay? And there, we create again a 3v1, a 2v1, and a 1v1, okay? If the red team, in this case, steals the ball, they have to play with the target players, the two target players, and change sides, okay? Okay, so um, this was it. I try to make it as, as brief as possible, which is this is very long, so it can be more fun and it won't be so boring, especially for the the for someone watching it. Uh, please um, like, share, subscribe, and comment. Okay, so I can keep adding material, and let me know what you would like to see. I'm gonna uh, in the next uh, sessions, I'm gonna put I'm gonna talk about especially Spanish football methodology that I learned in Spain when I worked there. And I hope you, you, you like it, okay? Okay, so see you soon. Bye-bye.